Thank you for inviting me back to the North Pole, Santa. My pleasure, Chet. It's the least I could do after my bradycardia attack during your first interview. Fortunately, Dr. Oz changed my heart medicine and I'm feeling great. You'd be amazed at the letters, the emails, and the tweets I got after your broadcast. They completely overwhelmed my post office and my computer servers. And they're designed for heavy volume, as you would expect. So that's never happened before. As I remember, you gave your job to your brother Harry after your attack. Is he doing as good a job as you used to do? Well, Harry did it only one year and then decided it wasn't for him and gave the job back to me. But his experience and fresh eyes allowed us to revisit the Christmas operation and make several changes. You've changed Christmas? How so? Well, the reindeer are primarily used for promotional events now. For actual delivery, we're relying more on standard distribution, the postal service, and so forth. We also have some robotic reindeer who lower pneumatic tubes into the chimneys and shoot the presents right into the living room. We have a number of crews out and they leapfrog. And I come in for the big jobs. It really doesn't make sense to have the CEO making house calls all the time. Robotic reindeer? Yes, uh, they're pretty much like large cargo drones. Harry got the idea and designed them himself. Mrs. Claus wrote the software. Much more efficient than the old system. Harry controls them from Christmas Central. And I select a team of reindeer for special cases, like the White House. They just don't like drones flying over there. You don't work with the same ones year after year? Dasher and Dancer, Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid, and Donner and Blitzen? It's Dunder, not Donner. A typo in the press years ago. Uh, okay, Dunder and Blitzen. Well, no. Blitzen retired last year. He was replaced by Kevin. And Comet and Cupid are no longer on the team. What happened to Comet and Cupid? They were replaced with Nick and Amy. We have a policy of not discussing personnel issues in public. It's part of our reindeer contract. A reindeer contract? Oh, yes. An ironclad contract. Once they violated the contract, we had to let them go. So, it's Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen and Nick and Amy and Dunder and Kevin, and Rudolph, of course. Right, the big star reindeer. He leads the team one time and becomes our diva with his publicity person, a manager, and an agent handling product endorsements. We call him a Rude. Did you know that red noses occur in about one out of every hundred flying reindeer? They're rare but not unheard of. Kevin has a red nose, but he doesn't let it go to his head. Okay, moving on. So you don't actually go down chimneys anymore? Oh, I go down a few, mostly for photo ops. These days, chimneys have gotten narrow with energy conservation, and lots of houses don't even have chimneys. So, how do you deliver gifts to houses without chimneys? I used to wonder that myself. Well, it's not that hard to understand if you read up on the particle wave duality nature of matter. It's just basic quantum physics. It takes some differential equations, but it's not beyond understanding. Do the work. Just calculate the Schrodinger equation for each present and determine the wave function overlap with the Christmas tree. Schrodinger and Heisenberg showed me how. The present in the sack is just a corollary to the particle in a box problem. 
The chimney is just a metaphor for the boundary. It has very little to do with chimneys themselves. It has to do with physics. I'll take your word for that. At least you're still at the North Pole. Nice workshop you have here. Well, no. This is just my ceremonial office for photo ops, interviews, etc. The operation isn't at the North Pole anymore. We're in Mexico and Malaysia and the Philippines. The elves are much happier being in warmer climates. Harry optimized the operation. Labor costs in the Arctic have just gone sky high. Health insurance for elves and heating costs are just unbelievable. The transportation costs to all corners of the globe through the roof. And that polar ice cap isn't going to be there forever. So we move the corporate offices of Christmas to Minneapolis. Wow! No longer at the North Pole. Who would have predicted that? That must have been a big cause of celebration in Minneapolis with all the PR, the bragging rights, and the tourism. Well, not really. You see, I run a stealthy operation. They don't even know I'm here. The last thing I want are tourists and visitors. The office has a cloaking shield so no one can see it. That's why I keep the North Pole office for show. Oh, I see. So that's why you invited me here to the North Pole. Hey, I noticed you're slimmer than the last time I saw you. Yes, thanks for noticing. I no longer need all that fat to keep warm. I've been working out. No longer a bowl full of jelly, huh? That's right. You don't have to be fat to be jolly. Oprah told me that. Santa, can you send us off with a ho, ho, ho? Well, <laughs> okay. Ho, ho, ho. A Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. <laughs>